even though AMD are already on the verge of launching their Ryzen 2 lineup, many gamers are still holding on to their trusty FX CPUs. And the FX processors were always praised for their overclocking potential. So today I wanted to see just how much performance there is to be had by overclocking an FX 4300. Hey guys, this is Ojwal from Xenotech. Hope you're all doing well and let's just get started. For our testing, I chose three games, namely The Witcher 3, GTA 5, and Fallout 4, as well as 3D Mark, that should give us a pretty good idea of the CPU's gaming performance. I also ran Cinebench R15 in multi core mode, as well as rendered a 720p footage using Premiere Pro, which should give us some real world performance numbers. Finally, I ran one hour of Prime95 in blend configuration and noted down the peak temperatures. So without further ado, let's bring out the benchmarks. The first game that we tested was The Witcher 3. It's funny to think that The Witcher 3 came out in 2015 and I'm still yet to complete it. Speaking of the performance, this game has always been GPU bound on my system except for a few intensive scenes in and around Novigrad where my FX 4300 struggles to keep up with my GPU. But still. We do not see a whole lot of improvement even when overclocked to 4.2 GHz as my GPU was always above 90% utilization when playing this game. I would like to say that CDPR have done an excellent job optimizing this game as it completely maxes out my processor and my graphics card. Speaking of excellent optimization, GT5 is another game that just loves a powerful processor. After the disaster that was GTA 4 on PC, Rockstar Games have done a pretty good job to ensure that GTA 5 does not fall into the same trap. Although the averages don't seem like much, there was a noticeable improvement in the actual gameplay as there were far less micro starters and the overall gameplay was much smoother. Fallout 4 is another game that is more CPU bound than GPU. The vast open world and great draw distances greatly benefit from the raw compute power in your high-end processor. However, it seems in our case the GTS 960 is the proverbial black sheep of the family as there are not a lot of extra frames to be had even when overclocking the processor to 4.2 GHz. Finally, we have 3 d Mark Firestrike, where we saw the physics score rise from 4126 to 4518. I would like to report though that the graphics score of the test was all over the place, and I just don't know why that was. Coming to the synthetic benchmark suites, first up is Cinebench R15. Here we see a healthy 14% jump in performance when overclocked to 4.2 GHz. This shows us the raw benefit in performance that overclocking gives us which just isn't apparent in the games tested earlier. Next up we have Adobe Premiere Pro. Here we see our rendering time for a 720p footage drop from 14 minutes 37 seconds to 13 minutes and 6 seconds. A noticeable improvement of over 1 minute or 11.58% which again is quite substantial. Coming to the thermals, as was expected, the load temperatures were higher when overclocked, though not as much as I had expected. Although I think these numbers would have been much higher if I had performed these tests during the summers. So I guess that finally leads us to a non-surprising conclusion, which is this. If you have an FX43 processor, you must overclock it. This is free performance except for a small increase in your electricity bill perhaps. Although my particular chip seems to hate overclocking as I could only get it to 4.2 GHz even at 1.44 volts, I have seen other reviewers and websites online get it to as high as 4.7 GHz. So that's been it guys, I had a great time with this trip and making this video was a fun exercise. 
please like subscribe and share the video if you liked it and i'll see you in the next one